Hello and welcome to 5 Legendary, looking at legendary characters from the Warcraft universe yet to be added to Hearthstone. Today, we'll be looking at a race who are criminally underrepresented in Hearthstone. Not only do they not have a single legendary to their name, they also don't have any epics and only one rare. The Worgen are the subject of today's video, and you'll see not only are there plenty of legendary characters to choose from, they're also pretty badass. Let's first touch on the character whose art is actually in the game. In fact, you can learn more about his lore by watching my Lore of the Cards episode on the Raging Worgen, Alpha Prime. Beginning his life as the Night Elven Druid Ralar Fangfire, his actions around 9,300 years ago would birth the Worgen race. Around this time, the Night Elves battled the Satyr in the War of the Satyr. Many Night Elves would lose their lives during this time, leading to an argument between Ralar and Malfurion Stormrage, who led the Night Elven Druids. Ralar believed that the pack form could help the Night Elves win the war. However, this form had been outlawed by Malfurion, as while it was powerful, the form's user could become swept away in its ferocity, attacking friend and foe alike. Ralar would grow to hate his Shando when his best friend Arvel died, refusing to use the pack form that could have saved him so as not to defy Malfurion. Ralar would become leader of the Druids of the Pack, his location unknown to Malfurion somewhere deep within the forests of Ashenvale. He sought a way for his fellow pack druids to gain mastery over their form, the Scythe of Illum being created in an attempt to do this. With the side's power, the pack druids would become worgen, though it did not give them control. They would join a battle between Night Elf and Satyr and slaughter all they saw, the Night Elves they bit also turning to worgen. Malfurion was able to quell the worgen threat by using the side of Elun to banish them to the Emerald Dream. Nearly 10,000 years later, Ralar and his worgen would be summoned from the Emerald Dream by the Archmage, Arugal, to defend the city of Gilneas from the undead Scourge. While they succeeded holding off the Scourge, the worgen would turn on the Gilneans, turning several of them into worgen as well. Alpha Prime would enlist the aid of Arugal to help him spread the worgen curse throughout the region of Silverpine Forest. Alpha Prime also formed the Wolf Cult to help spread the Worgen curse throughout the Gilneas region, having his followers murder innocent victims in order to earn the privilege to become a Worgen. Prime's main objective, however, was to find the Scythe of Elune. To this end, Alpha Prime would attack Gilneas, his Worgen infiltrating the giant grey main wall via tunnels running underneath. He also allied himself with the Forsaken to achieve his goal. While the Worgen's attack was highly successful, Alpha Prime would not end up getting his hands on the Scythe of Elune. The resourceful Gilneans, with aid from Arvel's lover, Belisra, were able to keep the Scythe from Prime's grip, Belisra helping the Gilneans turn to Worg and master their savagery. When Prime attacked Belisra in order to retrieve the Scythe, he was torn to shreds by a giant spirit wolf, which was revealed to be the spirit of Arvel coming to aid his lover. Every expansion needs a pirate or two, why not add another legendary one? with Admiral Ripsnarl. James Harrington was a sailor in the Alliance Navy. His life and career were going very well. He had a family at home and while at sea, had been climbing the ranks. It is not known how, but Harrington would find himself afflicted by the Worgen curse. In one tragic night of bloodlust fueled rage, the Worgen murdered his family and destroyed his naval career in one fell swoop. Taking on the name Ripsnarl, he would flee to the region of Westfall. Ripsnarl would be found and subdued by members of the Alliance military, and would be held in the stocks at the Alliance base of Sentinel Hill. However, Ripsnarl's pedigree as a sailor had roused the interest of Vanessa Van Cleef, now leader of the Defias Brotherhood. Continuing the legacy of her father Edwin, Vanessa sought to use a juggernaut being constructed in the Deadmines to destroy the city of Stormwind. She wanted Ripsnarl to command that juggernaut. 
Through deception and brutality, Vanessa got her wish, freeing Ripsnarl and taking him to the dead mines. Ripsnarl would stand against heroes seeking to stop Vanessa. He would tear at them, the speed and ferocity of his blows increasing the more blood he spilled. When wounded, Ripsnarl summoned a repressive fog. Water vapour would form into beings to attack the heroes and Ripsnarl himself would occasionally slash at them before renewing his assault. Eventually, however, the savage dog was put down. Darius Crowley was a young nobleman who sat upon the Gilnean Council of Lords. His charisma and kindness saw Crowley well loved by the people of Gilneas and in turn befriended the land's king. Darius accompanied his king to the city of Lordaeron to hear of the fall of Stormwind at the hands of the Orcish Horde during the First War. It was thanks to Crowley, sympathetic to the Alliance's plight, that any Gilnean forces were sent to help defend against the Orcs during the Second War, the King sending only a token force for self-serving reasons. Gilnaeus would later completely cut all ties with the Alliance, constructing the Grey Main Wall to further establish their isolation. Crowley was displeased by this action and lost further respect for his king when the undead Scourge attacked their former allies, and he did nothing to aid them. In defiance, Crowley dispatched the Gilneas Brigade to aid in Jaina Proudmoore's expedition to Kalimdor to save humanity from the coming forces of the Burning Legion. This saw the king round on his lord, accusing him of treason. Seeing no reason or sense in his king's actions, Crowley would lead the Northgate Rebellion, sparking civil war within Gilneas. The bloody war would end with Crowley's defeat and imprisonment. Clearly still somewhat fond of Crowley, the king considered granting the Lord amnesty, but around this time was when Alpha Prime launched his attack upon the city. Through necessity, Crowley was released and agreed to aid his king in the city's defence. Nobly, Crowley would lead a small force of men through Gilneas, rounding up as many Worgen as he could and making a final stand within Light's Dawn Cathedral. This allowed other Gilneans to escape while the majority of the savage Worgen bared down upon Crowley. His stand ended with the Worgen breaking through. Crowley was turned into a Worgen though he appeared to be quite fortunate meeting with Belisra early on in his transformation, the Night Elf able to help him stave off his encroaching Worgen savagery. Crowley would help gather feral Worgen in the woods of the Blackwald, allowing Belisra to calm more of his race. Crowley would aid in the reclaiming of the Scythe of Elun from the Forsaken, who helped the Worgen of Alpha Prime invade Gilneas. He would later rejoin with his king to assault and liberate Gilneas from the Forsaken. However, the Horde sent reinforcements and the Forsaken sought to use plague to wipe out the Worgen. Before this could be implemented, many of the now same Worgen and Gilneans fled the city. Most of the Worgen would flee to Darnassus, but Crowley remained behind, not giving up on liberating Gilneas. The war started well for the Worgen, them gaining the upper hand. However, Crowley would surrender when his daughter Lorna was captured by the Forsaken. Sylvanas gave Crowley a choice, his surrender or to murder his daughter and raise her as a Forsaken. Crowley almost instantly elected to save his daughter. Crowley has also made an appearance in the most recent WoW expansion, his hatred for the Forsaken very much alive. Alliance warriors are able to gain him as a follower. The following Worgen helped Crowley in his war with the Forsaken before his surrender. Ivar Bloodfang, leader of the Bloodfang Pack Worgen. The pack were under the command of Alpha Prime and the leaders of the charge upon Gilneas. As the invasion continued, however, the Blood Pack came to realise the Forsaken were far from their allies. Ivar would meet with Darius Crowley and agree to join the Worgen's Gilneas Liberation Front. Having originated in Silverpine Forest, the Bloodfang were among the first Gilneans to be turned when Arulgar summoned the Worgen, they knew the area well. This allowed Ivar to enact several sneak attacks upon the Forsaken, 
on one occasion blowing up a mine with some of Sylvanas' finest warriors within. Ivar was shocked and somewhat disgusted by the immediacy of Crowley's surrender. Ivar did not stop fighting and helped Alliance heroes venture into Shadowfan Keep and kill Lord Godfrey, the undead responsible for capturing Lorna in the first place. Ivar would ally with the Stormpike Dwarves on Purgation Isle, seeking to rid the Horde presence from the Hillsbrad foothills. However, the Horde were able to deal with the Stormpike threat, Ivar not being heard from since presumably still trying to rid his lands of the Forsaken. Our final entry could only be one man, really. The King of Gilneas, Gen Greymane. Since he is such a massive lore character, I'm going to keep this as brief as I can and not get carried away. As a youth, Greymane was told by his father that to ask for help was weakness, and this characteristic would stick with him throughout his life. Greymane was gruff, and closed off. He would marry Mia, and they would have two children together, Liam and Tess, which Greymane, despite the fact he did, rarely told he loved. Greymane would be among the leaders called to Lordaeron to discuss the Orcish Horde before the Second War. Greymane dismissed the concerns of the other human leaders, confident in the fact that Gilneas' army could deal with any threat. He would be talked into offering only token support by the lords that accompanied him to the meeting. After the war, Greymane tried to claim the Kingdom of Alterac for himself after it was left leaderless. Its ruler, Lord Perinald, had aided the orcs and was killed for his betrayal. Greymane had no claim to the land, yet he was quite insistent. However, the Black Dragon Deathwing in disguise was able to convince many of the Alliance kings that it was the dragon that deserved the kingdom. Luckily, Deathwing never took over as leader, his plan being foiled by the dragon Coriolstras and his friend the Mage Ronin. Greymane would come to resent the alliance he joined with the other kingdoms, annoyed that Gilnean taxes were being taken to build Nethergard Keep, which guarded the portal the orcs initially came through, and to fund the maintenance of orc concentration camps. He concluded to break from the alliance and construct a giant wall. Taking advice from Lord Godfrey, the Greymane wall was constructed through Crowley's territory, as the mountains made for a natural barrier as well. Crowley did not react as Greymane had hoped, defying his break away from the Alliance and leading an uprising. This would be quelled and Crowley would be thrown in prison. Greymane was hurt his friend turned on him, but ultimately couldn't blame the young Crowley. When the Scourge came to the Eastern Kingdoms, they sought to bring Gilneas to heal. Greymane's defences held fast, but as each dead Gilnean contributed to the growing ranks of the Scourge, it was only a matter of time until Gilneas fell. Greymane would give the go-ahead to Arugal to summon the Worgen, which while effective, infected Silverpine Forest with the Worgen Curse. Eventually, Worgen would make their way beyond the Greymane Wall, leading to panic within the kingdom. In order to counteract this, Greymane and his lords upon the full moon would secretly hold hunts in the Blackwald, killing any feral Worgen they came across. During one of these hunts, Greymane would pursue a Worgen only to be taken by surprise and bitten. He was able to hide his wounds so as not to be killed by the other members of the hunting party. Under the skin, Gilneas was a kingdom in chaos, Worgen murdering townsfolk in the dead of night, Crowley sympathisers stirring yet again, and Greymane's lack of desire to hunt the Worgen being seen as weakness by Lord Godfrey. Behind closed doors, Greymane was able to keep his Worgen curse in check with help from Belisra, and tinctures created by his alchemist, Crenan Aranus. Weakened by the rebellion and more and more citizens becoming Worgen, Gilneas had weakened to the point where the Worgen openly assaulted the city. Gen decided to free Crowley and with his help the king was able to lead many of his people to safety out of Gilneas though Crowley would sacrifice himself in order to do this. Greymane would once again join forces with Crowley, revealing himself to be a Walken as well. With help from the Night Elves, they have found a more permanent cure for the feral nature of the Walken. Lord Godfrey 
hated the Worgen and betrayed his king, holding him hostage. This only led to the deaths of Godfrey and the lords that aided him. He would later be revived as Forsaken. Gen and Crowley led an assault on Gilneas to drive the Forsaken, who had taken over, out. While they scored a major victory over the Banshee Queen herself, Sylvanas, the final battle ended with the death of Gen's son, Liam. His death later proved to be in vain, as the Forsaken would threaten the use of a plague to defeat the Worgen forces. This prompted Gen to take many of his people and flee to the night elven capital of Darnassus. Gen sought to rejoin with the Alliance, admitting the fact that his wall had been a mistake. While many were willing to accept the King's apology, Varian Rin, King of Stormwind, was not. Gen further pushed his case, presenting the strengths of his new people, the Worgen. While Varian conceded the Worgen would make powerful allies, he could not bring himself to approve Gilneas' re-entry into the Alliance. They had proven themselves to be untrustworthy, abandoning their allies in their hour of need during the Third War. Varian would later be lured to the Worgen's hunting grounds by Malfurion Stormrage. One thing led to another, and Varian would end up partaking in the ritual Worgen did to quell their ferocity. Rin sought to master his rage. After the ritual, Varian would lead an attack against the Horde with the Worgen at his side in the region of Ashenvale. This successful assault would lead to Varian calling a second summit, and the Worgen being inducted into the Alliance. Gen would have a presence in future WoW expansions such as Mists of Pandaria, but Legion has seen some major development for his character. Part of the failed assault on the Broken Shore, Gen watched helplessly as Varian Rin was killed by Gul'dan. Gen would blame the Horde for Varian's death as they fled the battle with the Legion before the King's murder, Sylvana sounding the horn to retreat, though they too had come under heavy fire and lost their war chief, Vol'jin. Feeling like a failure, Gen is unable to deliver a letter Varian gave him to give to his son and the new King of Stormwind, Anduin. Gen sends an adventurer in his place, swearing he will have his vengeance upon the Forsaken. Gen would lead the Alliance forces on the Broken Shore, being a key part of the Stormheim campaign, the story of which ending with Gen thwarting Sylvanas' bid to create more of the Valkyr to serve the Forsaken, undead for Rykel women capable of creating undead. He also spurs a grieving Anduin arm when confronted by the sight of one of his father's swords upon the broken shore. So there you have it, five Worgen that could, and some of which definitely should, become cards in Hearthstone. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, and share this video around. If you want to keep up to date with all the content I produce, make sure to click the notification button, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and follow on Twitch to catch any live streams. Until next time, happy Hearthstoning.